What's up guys, it's your boy Justin with our first review for X-Men Month 2024. I think this is like our third year of doing X-Men Month and today we're review reviewing the British X-Men spin-off team Excalibur. This came out in 1983, written by Chris Claremont, with art by Alan Davis. We reviewed a couple Alan Davis uh, comics on the channel, which I think uh, he did. We reviewed uh, Kill Raven, which he did the art for, and I think we reviewed um, uh, some other stuff. <laughs> I'm not sure, but yeah, Alan Davis's art is great. So yeah, this is the British spin-off team, which uh, has... I'm not exactly sure if they're all mutants, or just... I, for sure, I know these these three are... These two, I'm 100% sure. That's Captain Britain. That's Ra Rachel Summers Phoenix. That's uh, Kitty Pride Shadowcat. And there's obviously Kurt Wagner... Uh, Nightcrawler. Her, I'm not sure who she is. I don't even know what her powers are, but they call her Megan. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, Captain... I found out that Captain Brain can fly. <laughs> who knew? <laughs> yeah, so this is not the... I thought this was going to be the introduction to the team. Apparently this is not the introduction to the team at all. So the comic book starts off in, uh, Scotland... They lock Damon. Apparently, that's a real place where we see uh, some horror stuff. Like it starts off like almost like a Spawn Scott McFarlane comic book, where you get the like. Does that not? Does that not? Does this character not look like something you would see in Spawn? Like holy crap, dude! And yeah, like he's eating trash, and we see this, we this thing. I have no idea what the hell is going on. Um, wasn't there a guy being murdered? So yeah, our characters are at like a hostage situ situation. They sent they sent in a phoenix and phoenix and shadow cat. But you get this cool like you know pinup. Of like Phoenix, which I have no idea what the hell is the deal of Rachel Summers. Like she's like, is she like a clone of like a clone or something? I have no idea. Cause she she showed up, like I know she showed up like after like Marvel Girl Jean Grey died, and she was like Scott Summers like girlfriend after that. But like I don't know, dude. I have no idea. I'm an I'm. A, yeah, I need to read more old school X Men. So yeah, we we get introduced to this thing, who ki kills this police officer and wears his skin, dude, and it's called a war wolf. So our characters go in to save the hostages, only for like the psychic cry of that one dude dying by at the hands of the war wolf. Uh. Uh, basically immobilizes uh, uh, Rachel uh, uh, Phoenix and Kitty Pride uh, has to go at it alone. She pretends to be a ghost. Spooks, sp spooks the uh, gunmen. And then here we, we see that, oh, Captain Brink can fly. And even they didn't know that. So isn't he supposed to be your Captain America, guys? Shouldn't you know what his powers are? But yeah, she wakes up and, oh, she goes to town, dude. She goes to town, which, what a crazy costume this chick has. So yeah, she gets hit, hit, hits on by this random guy. Uh, we got all this, we got all this stuff going on where the war wolves kill another dude. I read I read this last night and I I kind of already blanking you know, on what the hell is going on. Oh yeah, we find out, like this page was confusing. Was this take was this going on at the time where the X Men were lost in space and everybody thought they were dead? I have no idea. She thought like I'm not. I was a little confused. Was she saying like the X Men were dead here or just that guy? Because I know that guy died. Doug Ramsey. He's from like uh 
from New Mutants. I forget like what his name is. is it Elixir or like Warlock? I don't know. So that's she's sad. She's a little sad and depressed about that. Uh, Megan's hanging out with uh, Nightcrawler. Captain Burn has is talking with his old flame. Is drama soap opera drama BS. And Katie Pride is like off to find uh, disguises herself as the Warwolves to try to draw them out because the Warwolves are after Phoenix. Because I guess they're the Warwolves are like agents of like. Um, Mojo or something from what's Mojo from War World or some shit? I am not War World. I forget, dude. I'm a. I need. I. It's been a. I'm like. It's been a while since I read like you know. Yeah, like the Mo Mojo Mayhem or whatever. <laughs> so yeah, this was not like a very good first issue of a team book, honestly. Even though there was there was a decent amount of action, but yeah, we don't, like they 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 should have like reintroduced they should have reintroduced the uh, the characters for people not familiar with the team. I don't know because this is not their apparently their first appearance. We get like no explanation of why what what these people are like why these people are together, what their goals are, none of that crap. Like usually, what they would put like. Old comics would put like an introduction or something. No, we didn't get any of that. I guess was there like a thing where this was a mini series or there was a mini series before their own monthly series or something? I have no idea, dude. Uh, I think for our first like you know issue of a, like a series, this was like kind of like you. It feels like you're dropped in the middle of like a series that had already been going on for a while. So I didn't like that at all, but otherwise, I thought the dialogue was good, the action, what action there was, was good. Though, like, kind of, like, would have, like I said, kind of would have liked some introduction of who these people are, what the fuck they're doing, what what's her even powers. I like, she, they call her Megan. Is she supposed to be the 616 Meg, uh, Megan or Sprite? From like X File, sorry, Exiles, which I'm more familiar with that Sprite or Pixie or whatever her her name is. I, her power is like teleportation, right? So, and her name was Megan with a with a Y, not not an I. So it's like, okay, are they like the same character, but from like alternate realities? I don't know, dude. So yeah, I uh, I probably should have read some more old school, like you know. X Men before reading this, before dropping to this, because I had no idea what the hell was going on. So yeah, uh, overall, what I think about this comic book, I think the art was good, the dialogue was good, everything was pretty much good. I like this cover, this pretty cool cover. I don't know if I would, I kind of regret paying ten bucks for this, because uh, like, what exactly makes this like? Why is this ten bucks? Because it's not key. There's this is not the first appearance of anybody. And this isn't like the first appearance of the team. So what makes this like worth 10 bucks? I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this review, guys. Kind of like a lackluster, uh, you know, review for our first, like, you know, review for this year's X-Men month. But it is what it is. I was going to review the Epic Collection uh Chil X Men Children of the Atom, which has like the first 20 issues of X Men, but I couldn't finish it in time. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to review that sometime this week or next week, depending on if I could finish it in time. But, yeah, we'll try to do at least three X Men month reviews per week, maybe more. We'll, tr we'll try because I'm, I'm kind of busy. But, yeah, that's it for this review, guys. If I were to give this a rating, ah. Uh, it's hard to give it a rating because it's like, okay, it's kind of my fault for not knowing the characters enough. But I feel like, okay, this is the f first issue of a series. Maybe you should have like had like a, you know, word bubble or something. Like introduction of who the characters are, blah, blah, blah. All that stuff. Like other series have done. Alright, so I'll give it like a 6.5 out of 10 just because I like the art. 
So that's it for this review, guys. Peace out.